Growing up, I was constantly interacting with wildlife and that was my happy spot. I fell in love with it and decided that I really wanted to continue to do a PhD. The Palos Verdes blue butterfly was thought extinct for 11 years. Rudy Matoni, my predecessor on butterflies, he needed help. When I came on, we had 188, I want to say, in captivity. We weren't making any progress. The ants would come and they'd get into the cage and they would slice up the butterflies and take them off piece by piece. He was a better entomologist than I will ever be. So it was hard to ask permission to try new methods. The soapy water you see on the legs, those are ant baths. My predecessor really was focused on the symbiotic relationship with ants, whereas I was finding that the ants are problematic. We had this big discussion and they allowed me to try something new on 18 females. And with those 18 females, excluding the ants and hand feeding the adults, we went to 750-ish. I was like, this, this is what we need to do. But it's super labor intensive. And then thinking, how do I take care of all of them next year when I was pressed to my limit taking care of 18? I went to the Moore Park Zoo. And that summer, I applied for a part-time job as a lecturer there, and I started teaching there. And I introduced myself and I said, I'm a professor here over in biology, and I work on endangered butterflies, and I would really like to breed them. And I was wondering if your students would want to work on them. Hi, Ashley. I'm so excited. How's it going? Okay, so troops. So here's our goal. So we want to make sure that all of our ant baths are refreshed. Uh, we want to make sure we've refreshed all the food for all of the butterflies. We need to make notes in our logs. Look at you guys. This is why like teamwork is dream work. That first season I had I think 18 students helping me and we went from 750-ish to 4,500 and like 18. Butterflies came into my life a year before I got divorced and became a single mom. I was not progressing in my PhD program and I was trying to live on less than 20,000 a year. Butterflies, they are eggs, they hatch, they eat, they grow, they shed, and then they go into a chrysalis and they break down to the cellular level. There's no tissues left. There's no organs left. There's just cellular goo. And then they reorganize and they come out as a butterfly. And that's what happened. Butterflies got me my PhD. That was my dissertation. Butterfly life cycle means so much to me because I completely reinvented myself in that moment with the safety net of my friends here in LA. And I'm not the same person. I'm totally focused on how necessary it is to have a team. I, if you looked at cellular goo, you'd be like, this is not pretty. But what comes out of it is beautiful. And I think I have hope for the first time in a long time. Today is like the party day when all the working parts come together to celebrate a piece of success. And before we do the release, and everyone who is here will release at least two bugs. These students are learning about ecology and ecosystems and the interconnections. And many of them learn that they too can reinvent themselves and go on to, to be something they never imagined was within their grasp. So we didn't think that we would be in the butterfly business. 
to get the plants to thrive, to succeed, it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of volunteer hours. So we are very optimistic that we can get these butterflies back and thriving on their own. I've never, never released a butterfly before, uh, so that was certainly a, a new experience for me. Um, and it, gives, it certainly gives more perspective when you see them flying right out of, out of the cup, out of your hand. Why does this little butterfly that only exists on the Palos Verdes Peninsula matter? You look at how you guard against a complete collapse of our Mother Earth is with biodiversity. That's what gives you resiliency in the face of these challenges.